So now we are going to add a constraint for the height of the blue view. And remember that the height of the blue view can again be determined in terms of the height of the canvas, but this time not in terms of a multiplication, but rather in terms of a subtraction. Right? So the, for the width of the blue view, we knew that it should be half the uh, width of the canvas, so we could multiply it with 0 0.5, but this time we only know that the height of the blue view should be the height of the canvas minus 20 for the top margin and minus 20 for the bottom margin. So what we need to do now is to de define the height um, using an auto layout constraint, but not with a multiplier, but rather with a constant, because this is where we can um, add values for addition or subtraction. So again, we're using the same initializer for the auto layout constraint. And we're creating two items, or we're um, creating a constraint that is relating two items with an, um, one with another. So the first one is going to be the blue view, and the second one is going to be the canvas again. This time we're dealing with the height of these two views, so uh, the attribute in both cases will be height this time. For the relation, again, we don't bother about the other two, we just de um, define this as equal. And because the multiplier, we don't care about this one this time, it's just going to be 1 so that the end result will just stay the same when it gets multiplied by 1. And then we've got the constant, and for the constant we said that it should be um, minus 2 times the margin. So first let's define the margin again, as we did before in the previous lesson. Uh, we just set it to 20, and then in here we say minus margin, that's the margin for the top, and minus margin that's the margin for the bottom. All right, so now we're done creating the two constraints. Um, but only having these two constraints, or only having created these two constraints, actually won't help us, because just creating the constraints, even though we already related them with the actual views, will have no effect. Because right now, these constraints are still deactivated. So we just may have to activate them, and the way how we do this is by setting a property on them that is called is active. And we're setting this to true here, and then we're using the same approach to set the second auto layout constraint to true or to, to active. And then we see that we just created this blue view um, with the correct width and the correct height, but of course the x and y positioning is not yet implemented but we see that we already um, implemented uh, the correct size. And um, so I basically already mentioned on the slides that it is not possible to um, change the um, frame of a UI view anymore directly once we are using auto layout. And to prove this, I'm just going to try to reset the frame of the view manually by changing the width to a value of 20. So now we should see that this blue view actually becomes more narrow. But we actually don't, because as I said before, auto layout is more powerful than our direct frame manipulations. And as we already determined or defined these constraints up here, this line won't have any effect. So now we can go and change the frame as much as we like, but it's actually not going to take any effect. All right, so let's now take a look at how to implement the x and the y values. And for that, um, the first thing, let's um, take a look at the x value. And we know that there should be a 20-point margin from the leading edge of the canvas to the leading edge of the blue view. So we are using the same initializer again for the um, constraint that we want to create. Again, we know that we want to relate the blue view with the canvas. So the two items, again, will be blue view and canvas. The related by will be equal again. And then the attribute in both times is going to be the leading edge. So that's going to be dot leading because we want to relate these two uh, attributes of our items with another. And 
This time again we have a, a hard value, an addition that we want to do, not a multiplication. So the multiplier is just going to be 1 and the constant will be set to 20. And this makes sure that now the leading edge of the blue view um, will have a 20 point distance to the leading edge of the canvas. And the reason why we don't see it yet is because we haven't activated the constraint. So as soon as we do that, the view should shift to the right and we should actually be able to see the margin on the left. So let's do exactly the same thing for the top. And to save some typing, I'm just going to copy this because it's very, very similar, except that we have to change the leading attribute to the top attribute. And that's how we achieve the margin from the top. 